All right, so we're gonna talk about the cell cycle and mitosis. Um, in this case, mitosis, we may hit a little bit on meiosis as well. Mitosis is cell division of cells that are in your body to make you bigger as a person. Not, so the cells don't get bigger, but you grow. So when you're growing from an infant to a toddler and so forth, you're putting on more cells. Your cells are dividing and you're growing. That's called mitosis. Then there's a special type of cell division called meiosis that is sex cell um, division. And this would be the gametes that make sperm or egg, depending on your, um, you know, whatever sex you're born. And so if you um, have testes, you'll make sperm cells, ovaries, you'll make egg cells. But that's a special type of cell division called meiosis. We're going to talk mostly about mitosis, though, for the moment. And so we're also going to talk about the cell cycle in general. But first, we're going to talk about prokaryotic cells. These are cells that do not have a true nucleus or other or type of organelles. These are bacteria. Um, and there's two different types of bacteria, though there are bacteria that are kind of your general everyday bacteria like E. coli. And um, then you also have archaebacteria, which are specialized bacteria that live in, ext in extreme environments. They're actually called extremophiles. So they might leave it, live in hot sulfur springs and stuff like that. Environments that we couldn't, or most living cells couldn't live in. So the first uh, type of cell division we're just gonna describe is cell division that takes place in the simpler cells, the prokaryotic cells. Not to say that they're necessarily simple, but they're definitely less complex in general than eukaryotic cells. And we call that cell division um, where the DNA is replicating. Because remember, a cell is gonna divide into two, so it needs to double the amount of DNA it has before it puts it into two separate cells. So you have to initially have cell replication or DNA replication. The DNA has to duplicate. Now remember bacteria, so bacteria has DNA, it's going to duplicate it. Um, and then it'll move to two different sides of the cell and divide. Um, I believe we call that fission. So the cell will elongate and then split into two daughter cells. So that is how cell division occurs in bacterial cells. We call that binary fission. So here's our cell of our bacteria cell. Again, you don't see any organelles, you don't see a nucleus or anything like that. It does have a phospholipid bilayer. In some cases, they may have a cell wall. But anyway, the DNA will double and then it'll move to different regions and then it'll be pinched off until ultimately it becomes two new um, bacterial cells. So this is how cells, you know, when you got bacteria growing in your body and you're supposed to be doing it, this is what's happening. And then when you take that antibiotic, hopefully you interrupt this cell division or kill the cell in different ways. But this is cell division in bacterial cells. Obviously, um, it also happens like in our organelles this way as well. Our mitochondria will go through division and duplicate inside your cells. Here is a bacterial cell becoming two new bacterial cells where ultimately the cell membranes will pinch between the two and you'll have two cells. Again, like they said, they have cell walls as well. Now it's a lot more complex in eukaryotic cells. And so that's what we're gonna describe next. Um, normally during um, your cells are in what we call interphase where the DNA is and your cells is kind of doing its everyday job. And then, uh, and the DNA is not normally seen as chromosomes like you see in this picture. Normally it's this kind of loose in the nucleus. So you won't be able to make out the chromosomes. We call it chromatin at that point, which is the DNA and the proteins and so forth. Um, obviously that DNA will have to duplicate. And before we see mitosis, we'll see these chromosomes. 
where the chromatin will coil up into um, DNA um, chromosomes, but otherwise it's not usually looks like that. Um, so there's a lot that goes on for that to happen. So again, um, we're gonna talk about mitosis and a bit of meiosis. And mitosis is cell division that takes place in non-reproductive cells. So we're talking about um, the cells in your skin. So for instance, now some cells are dividing at a much faster rate than others, like our hair cells. Our hair cells are constantly dividing it through mitosis and so forth. But something like our muscle cells don't go through much mitosis once you get your adult muscle cells or your adult nerve cells. Right, for the most part, will kind of go into a, just a working stage and not really divide anymore. So that's why it's so critical if you lose nerve cells that you don't really get those back. But hair cells, you do. Unfortunately, cancer is what happens when you have mitosis that's going, un, going crazy, going unregulated, and you got cell divisions that's just this out of control. That's, um, so basically mitosis that's unregulated. So people will take chemo to kill off fast growing cells. And so the reason why you lose hair is the chemo is attacking fast my cells are going through mitosis, basically. It's attacking parts of mitosis. So it's attacking preferentially cells that are reproducing at a very fast rate. And so that's why you lose your hair cells when you take chemo for your cancer cells, because it's attacking fast mitosis, you know, cells are going through mitosis rapidly. Your muscles don't go through mitosis rapidly. Once you got your muscles, your muscle size is mostly through this increasing the size of the cells. And again, meiosis is um, cell division that takes place in germ cells or reproductive cells like the gametes I mentioned before. So here is the basics of the cell cycle of eukaryotic cells. Again, eukaryotic cells are true cells, cells with a true nucleus, organelles, this will be our animal cells, like in, we have in our zoology class, or plant cells, or fungal cells, or protists. These are all eukaryotic cells. So they will all do some type of mitosis. The first three phases of the cell cycle is known as interphase. So you have a G phase, which is a gap phase one, which is where the cell is primarily growing making new proteins and so forth. Then you have an S phase, which represents synthesis phase. This is when the DNA replicates or duplicates, ultimately duplicates, obviously. That's DNA replication. And then you have G2 phase, which is gap two phase, where you start to see microtubule synthesis taking place. Microtubules, remember, is part of the cytoskeleton. And the cytoskeleton is critical for moving stuff around the cell, including being actively involved in mitosis. So anyway, that's interface. So this is all kind of like preparing. This is the normal stages of the cell growing and doing its thing. And then we go into mitosis, which is the M phase. This is when the chromosomes will pull apart. And then you have the C phase, which is when the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is everything between the nucleus, the nuclear membrane and the cellular membrane. That's the cytoplasm. When it, do, it divides, and that's um, um, C phase. So again, this is mitosis, and then this is cytokinesis. Again, this is when the cell divides into two new cells. So we have our interphase, which is, again, where most of your cells will be at at any given time. Then you're going to have mitosis and cytokinesis. So cell cells will do this at a much faster rate, like your hair cells or, or your skin cells, things that are being used up all the time. Other cells, like your muscle cells, your nerve cells, will likely be an interface indefinitely and normally in what they call G0 phase. Like your muscles, instead of being in G1, we'll call it G0, and your muscles won't be... Um, dividing anymore. So this is the kind of like the, the well, this is the cell cycle. 
Um, so again, the G phase is relatively long part of the cell cycle. This is where proteins are growing. The cells is doing its thing. Then the S phase is the DNA duplicating. G phase is all the microtubules forming. And then we go through mitosis, which has these four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. This is when we can see the chromosomes. You won't see the chromosomes here in the G phase, for instance. It'll be chromatin is what we'll call it. The DNA will get coiled up and you'll see that during mitosis. Okay, so here is the cell cycle. Here we have our interface. The chromosomes um, might not be very distinguishable. It'll be chromatin. You may start to see some of it coiling up as it's getting closer and closer to wanting to go through mitosis. But the DNA, so we've got all the different phases, G phase, S phase, and G2. Again, G phase, G1 phase, the gap phase one, you will not see um, the DNA coiled up. It'll just be chromatin. Then the DNA will duplicate during the S phase in the nucleus. Because remember, when you, you got to duplicate it before you divide it into two new cells. Otherwise, you're going to run out of, out of chromosomes and DNA. Does that make sense to everybody? So you got to duplicate everything, and then you could have two new cells. So you're going to duplicate um, the rest of the, the structures in the cell at some point. Um, then you're going to go into G2 phase and make the microtubules. So that's actually a relatively long phase, right? If you go back to this previous picture, it's rather long part of the cell cycle. But um, once you see real chromosomes, you're knowing that you're moving into mitosis. And so we call that the M phase. And so you start to see chromosomes. And then you start to see, if you have a good microscope, you're gonna see some of the uh, microtubules and spindles coming out from the centrioles. That's what those are called. And the nucleus membrane is still present. Then uh, we call that prophase. So the chromosomes are very apparent. Then we're gonna move into metaphase. And what you see is all the chromosomes lining up in the middle. If it was like an equator of, a, of the planet, they'd be all lining up near the middle. What is doing that are these microtubules. So the chromosomes are lining up in the middle and we call that metaphase. Then the chromosomes get pulled apart and they go to their respective poles and we call that anaphase. So the microtubules are literally pulling the chromosomes apart into these two new cells. And notice that the nuclear membrane is gone at this point in here. Then we move into what we call telophase where a new nuclear membrane forms. Remember nuclear membranes, phospholipid bilayer, it's, the nu it's the, gonna be the nucleus. And then the chromosomes start to unwind and go back to chromatin and we call that telophase. Then the cell begins pinching and dividing into two new cells, and we call that cytokinesis. So this is essentially mitosis. So we got your long interphase, then you have your relatively short um, mitosis or M phase, prophase goes into metaphase, anaphase, telophase, the cells divide into two new cells. Now, if there's some cells that are destined to be growing constantly, you might have mitosis happening pretty quickly again. Like if you're at the tip of a rip, a root tip, that we might look at, or your skin cells, you're gonna be seeing a lot of cells undergoing mitosis at any given moment. But if you're looking at your muscles, you won't see this. So that is in a nutshell, the cell cycle. The growth phase, which is G1, GAP1, synthesis, GAP2. We go through mitosis, and then we go into cytokinesis, cell division. So again, interface is just the growth phase. 
mitosis is that division of the nuclear membrane, or excuse me, the nuclear uh, materials, the chromosomes. We call that karyokinesis, when the nucleus divides into two new nucleuses. Um, and that again, as you saw in the pictures are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So remember prophase, we see the chromosomes. Metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the middle. There's no more nuclear membrane. Anaphase, we pull them apart. Telophase, we have two new nucleuses or nuclei, what we would call them plural, and cytokinesis, cell division. So again, I just, my slides tend to be a little bit redundant. Please read them to help you to understand it. Um, but again, uh, the chromosomes are gonna line up in the middle and they attach to these protein tubules, these spindles at the center. And the center is called conidocore. And let me show you where that is. Uh, right here in the center of the chromosomes. So now what I'm gonna show you is the actual cell. And then of course, here's the artist's picture of it. So this is what you will see under a microscope at the top. So here's our interface. You'll see that you can't really make out any of the chromosomes in the nucleus. This is interface, the cell's growing. It's doing its metabolism or whatever that cell's job is to do. Here's our nucleus or cell membrane. Then we see chromosomes. That means that the DNA wound up. It's tightened up and coils up. And that's prophase. That's how we know prophase has started. We see these chromosomes. The nuclear membrane begins to disintegrate or disappear. These tubes grab onto the chromosomes and line them up in the middle. right at the center where this, I uh, believe it's called conida core, but double check that because I might have been pronouncing it wrong. But the main thing is that, that I want you to take from this is that the chromosomes are all lined up in the middle during metaphase. That's how you know it's metaphase. You see these chromosomes in the middle and you can see the spindle fibers coming off from the sides going to the centrioles. And then down here, you can read more of the text. So please read the notes in, in addition to listening to what I tell you. I try to give you the cliff notes in the lecture and then for you to go back and study a little bit, right? Because it's easy for the brain to forget. So please take the time to read a little bit about it, watch a YouTube video about it and so forth to help understand it better. Then during mitosis, we'll see anaphase where the chromosomes get pulled apart. Telophase, you'll see them, uh, the new nucleus is forming. And then cytokinesis, cells, break apart into two, two new daughter cells. We call them daughter cells. Even though they are parts of the old cell, they're now two new daughter cells. So looking at the real picture, so you can see anaphase, the chromosomes are being pulled apart to separate poles. So as remember, metaphase was originally, they were all in the middle. Now they're going to two, gonna make two new nuclei Telophase, we have a new nucleus and you're starting to see the cell pinching. So there's gonna be proteins helping pinch it, like a bubble pinching into two new bubbles. So telophase, we have a new nucleus and the cell's about pinched. So that's what you look at under, and you'll see it under a microscope looking like this, especially dyed so you can see the proteins and the, chromo and the chromosomes in these pictures, but you can see this. <clears throat> and then during cytokinesis, we pinch it off and become two new cells. This is another picture of the same thing. Interphase, you don't see chromosomes. Prophase, you see the chromosomes. Prometaphase, you're starting to see the chromosomes moving around, lining up. You see the nucleus disappearing, the nuclear membrane. Metaphase, you see them lining up in the middle. Anaphase, they get pulled apart. Telophase, they're now in two separate new cells and we're beginning to divide the cell in half, cytokinesis. So I just have lots and lots of pictures in these slides for you to see them over and over again from multiple textbooks. Same idea, right? 
interphase, mitosis, metaphase. Here's what the picture from an artist illustrator would have made. The centrioles are helping line up everything. So they're using these protein chains that are sticking, kind of lining them up with a, like a, a polar rod. Does that make sense to everybody? And then they pull them over to their side. It's gonna use ATP and fuel sources like that to make that happen. So again, I just have lots of pictures for you to see cytokinesis. Here's an actual cytokinesis taking place where this cell is gonna be divided into new cells. And so you'll see a cleavage form where it's basically kind of like wrapping protein strings from inside and pinching them together. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like putting a, imagine if you had a balloon and you tied a string and started pinching it. It's kind of like that. Except now you sort of pop in the balloon and you have two balloons. Plant cells have um, cell walls, so they would have to form a new cell plate. Because remember, they have cell walls. So they're gonna, they're gonna pinch the membrane and then form a new cell wall at the same time. So they're forming a new cell wall after they pinch the membrane. Here's two cells um, and so forth. So um, in addition to um, cell division, because remember the fetus is, is gonna be going through a lot of mitosis. Here's a hand forming, for instance, in a fetus. And so it looks like a web. Now in some animals, it would stay a web to Paul to help them swim. But in humans, these cells are gonna die. And so there's special um, instructions in the DNA and other factors that will cause program, programmed cell death, which will basically kill all these cells between your fingers, losing the webbing. So in addition to cell division, there is also cell death that's occurring too, where they get messages to say, hey, this is as far as you need to grow, now you need to die, so you can have the fingers free. So, this, so there's all sorts of things that are going on during development as well. It seems like when you take cells and put them in a cell culture, you can get them to grow about 50 times, go through mitosis about 50 times, and then they end up dying. However, cancer cells can grow indefinitely. There are cancer cells that were taken from patients 50 years ago that are still alive in test tubes long after the patient has died and then used for research. So there is a, there are, they are essentially immortal. Their cells are immortal as long as they keep being fed and put into new test tubes. So there is a path to immortality and, and cancer found the way to do it as long as somebody keeps it growing in a test tube. So there's all sorts of checkpoints along the cell cycle that says, hey, um, it's time to go through mitosis or not. It's almost like an hourglass filling up with proteins during growth. And once the hourglass empties of sand, the cell knows it's time to go to the next phase. In this case, it's the cell's building up with proteins and DNA. And when it reaches a certain um, threshold, it triggers the cell to go through mitosis and divide. Based on the instructions, based on the developmental stage of that cell and so forth. But there's all sorts of checkpoints. And you know that you have all sorts of different types of cells, right? Brains, you know, nerve cells, muscle cells, skin cells, blood cells, immune cells. One of the reasons why cancer is so hard to fight is because you could have potential cancer in any given number of types of cells. And they can do all sorts of, have all sorts of different types of biology and tissues. And so if you go attacking certain types of cells with chemo, you might be killing off a 
You know what I'm saying? That's what makes it one of the reasons why it's so complex. In addition to the fact that the cells can evolve and avoid that chemo. But again, there's these different checkpoints that the cell is constantly monitoring. But in the case of cancer, these checkpoints are no longer being um, paid attention to. And the cells is constantly growing and dividing, trying to take all the sugar from your body, for instance, and so forth. So again, the cells are following the instructions at these different checkpoints. And when it reaches a certain checkpoint, it'll either undergo mitosis, and if it hasn't reached it, it won't. But the point with cancer is it's unrestrained cell growth. They don't follow these checkpoints. <clears throat> and of course, there's different types of um, cell division. Some of them could be benign. It's not really cancer. Normally, it's not called cancer if it's benign. But that's cell division that's taking place without, in the way it's not really supposed to be happening but it stays encapsulated and doesn't really invade your other tissues. The problem with cancer cell growth is it usually escapes that capsule and then starts going into other tissues and starting to grow. So, you know, you might have a little bit of cancer growing um, in one set of tissues and then it'll go to your lungs and start growing in there. And eventually it'll stop your lungs from working properly or your brain, killing the other cells around it, all sorts of things. Cancer cells are capable of taking blood vessels and using them for themselves. They can do all sorts of nasty things to take over your body, even though it is your body, essentially. That's what makes it so hard to find. Um, this may be of interest to you, but I'm actually a cancer survivor. I had lymphoma and had a blood cancer. Um, and so I had to take chemo, lose all my hair, Surprisingly, I was still able to have children, even though I was told I wasn't able to be able to. I was able to. Um, but it was a scary moment, but I was lucky enough to survive it. You guys are even more lucky because you get to hear me lecture. You guys would never, I mean, I'm irreplaceable, right? Nobody's laughing. You must really believe it. No, I really did have cancer. And uh, it was, uh, they even had the students like, prayers for Dr. Musser and stuff like that. So it was quite uh, moving that they did that. But again, what happens is the cells start doing their own thing. Every generation become, gets new mutations and it becomes harder and harder to fight with chemo. Um, and so here's a, some a carcinoma in the lungs and it escapes and gets into the bloodstream and now it's traveling throughout the entire body. My mother died sadly from cancer. She had kidney cancer and she ended up with a brain tumor in the brain that killed her before we knew what was going on. Some cancers are much, much harder to, the nice thing about my, my cancer is I had a tumor on my back. And so we discovered it relatively, I was lucky to discover it early. While can, you know, cancer of the kidneys or cancers of the ovaries or cancer of the uh, pancreas goes unnoticed until it's usually stage four and too late. Actually, my sister died of ovarian cancer. So I don't know what the deal is. A lot of people, it was like lightning struck twice or three times in my case. So anyway, and that all happened in the last 10 years. So anyhow, um, I'm the survivor of that. So anyway, I don't mean to digress in that, but at least in everybody's, even if you don't know somebody that's been touched by cancer, eventually if you live long enough, you will. Cancer is typically more of an old person's disease, even though I was relatively young when I had my cancer in my 30s. Um, and there are juvenile cancers as well, but the older you get, the more likely you are to get cancer because your cells go through so many divisions and you start to get mutations taking place in, these, in the DNA that are involved in these checkpoints. So cancer is more likely to happen the older you, the longer you live on the earth, basically. So basically these mutations form in growth regulating genes. There are generally two classes of these genes, um, proto-oncogenes 
that basically are proteins that stimulate cell division. So again, if these genes get altered, you're gonna have you know, unregulated cell division. And then there's also tumor suppressing genes that where um, mutations take place um, that would normally inhibit cell division. These also get mutated and altered. And anyway, to make a long, this is making a very complex topic overly simplified. But basically these genes that are important for cell division um, get mutated in such a way that the checkpoints are no longer being observed and then the cells just start growing. And these cells are very aggressive. They can start uh, taking on, you know, when you eat a little bit of sugar, it'll go to your cancer cells faster than the rest of your cells, for instance. They'll start getting your other, your blood vessels to start giving them capillaries and nutrients. So it's, I mean, it's unbelievable what, how these cells, they basically are functioning as free agents in your body, even though they were part of your body. All sorts of things can cause these mutations. You can run around the wrong chemicals too much. Too many radi get radiated too much. Viruses are also very keen on making cancer cells as well. Um, if you, get, I don't wanna scare anybody that's had mono, but you're more likely to get cancer if you've had mono, for instance. Uh, HPV, you know, I've, it's probably a good idea to take the HPV vaccine, human papillomavirus, because most people will have, can get that from unprotected sex. So you have a better chance of getting um, female cancers, and I don't know about male cancers, but you definitely, one of the reasons to consider HPV and, you know, following safe sex practices as best you can. <clears throat> so viruses can help increase the likelihood of cancers. Let's see how we're doing on time. We'll talk about meiosis next time, but let's watch maybe a quick video on mitosis. Okay, so here we're watching a video and we see some chromosomes. That means we're probably getting into prophase. I pause that for a second. Make sure that my recording is working properly. So we're looking at mitosis under the microscope. And so here we have what looks like prophase to me. You can see the chromosomes are kind of winding up. We can see them because, and now we're getting what looks like the beginning of later prophase, moving into uh, metaphase. You see the chromosomes are lining up more and more in the middle. Now it looks like we're going into anaphase. See how the chromosomes are getting pulled to the sides? Now we're moving into telophase and looks like cytokinesis. Um, this looks like metaphase here, doesn't it? While well, these are in prophase. Anaphase looks like it's going on here. Metaphase still there. Anaphase has started here. Now these are all in anaphase and look, these cells that were in interphase and prophase are now look like they're in metaphase. Now we have cytokinesis and we have new cells.
So here we have interface. Now it looks like proface. And now we have metaphase. And then it looks like we're about to go into anaphase. Anaphase is going on. And now we have telophase and cytokinesis. See how the cell membranes break into two? Now we have two new cells. See what we got on this. Here's cancer cells undergoing. Let's look at this one right here. Here we have cancer cells and let's see if I can increase the volume. Anyway, here's um, cancer cells. This is what we can figure out. So say you, what's happening here is the cancer cells on the right. You see that? Here's the healthy cells over here. So this is undergoing crazy amount of cell division relative to the other cells. So in this case, it looks like the red is representing cancer cell division. Seems like it's doing it at a much more rapid pace than the yellow cells. See that? So the cancer cells are just replicating at such faster rate than normal cells around the area. In this case, it looks like the yellow ones are the cancer cells. And they're showing you in this picture what's happening. See that? Showing you all the different phases of mitosis, really fast picture. The cancer cells are just taking over, forming the tumor. All the healthy cells are way behind. This is all happening in a 